Hello. In this video, we're going to see how we can perform functional safety on an industrial control application with the idea of gaining compliance to IEC 61508. Now, connected to my laptop at the moment, I have this particular evaluation board. It's a Texas Instruments launchpad and it has a Cortex M0 Plus. Now, the starting point is I'm going to invoke the IDE, Code Composer Studio, and I'm going to invoke it from within LDRA. And LDRA is then going to listen to everything that we do inside the Code Composer Studio IDE, and that way it's going to understand about the project. So there we can see it's detected the board that's connected to my laptop. Let's take a look at the source code. So there we have the project. Well, let's start by doing a rebuild. It's important to do a rebuild because LDRA is going to listen to everything that's happening. And we're then going to pass this. We can see, for instance, here, we're using the TI ARM Clang compiler. Here we have the, the main, and I've actually set a breakpoint here on Thermistor run example. And let's go and debug this. So that's now going to connect to my target. So there we go, let's start connecting. And then it's going to download the program. And there we can see we're now executing. So let's just let this run. Okay, and now if I press the button on my target, I should eventually get into this thermistor mode. There we can see we've now hit that. Okay, so I'm now going to go and close down the IDE. And LDRA has now passed exactly what's happened. And there we can see we've built this executable here. We've got all these source files. We can see we have uh, include paths and also preprocessor symbols. So I could now go and open this with TV Vision. Now to save time, I've already done that. So let's open up TV Vision. And this is the LDRA productivity package for industrial controls. And there we can see we've already analyzed that code. And so what I'd now like to be able to do is, well, first of all, we need to check compliance to a coding standard. So lots of coding standards that I could select. So this is just a, a sample of some of them. And it's this MISRA C 2023 that I'm interested in. I've got that set up. Let's go and do, let's start with a summary report. And we can see we've got lots of violations. Well, the code wasn't written to be compliant. And so, of course, we have lots of, of violations. Let's take a look at some of these. What we've got that might be interesting. Um, what about, um, so here's an interesting one. Unused procedure parameter. Well, let's do a code review for that one violation. And if we scroll down, we can see four places where we've not used this parameter reader. Well, let's take a, a closer look. And there we can see, yes, we have this callback function that takes reader and it looks like it's not used. So that's very easy to fix. I could simply put a, a void cast in here for that parameter and that then violation would, would go away. What about uh, taking a look at something else? Let's take a look at maybe the, the main. So let me go and take a look at main. Let's do a code review on that. And there we can see a number of violations. Interestingly, this one has been grayed out. Why is that? Well, that's because I've actually justified the violation and I actually modified the source code to put an elder rate excluding to say, I know I've got uh, an infinite loop here, but I put my description in here, my justification, to say, well, actually, this is the main loop, which is always infinite. So that's one way of justifying violations. Another way is we could decide, uh, let's take a look at uh, this one here, included file not protected with hash define. Well, I wanted, I could simply go and exclude that. I'm going to exclude everything inside the main, and I'm going to put my justification in here. Okay, not a very good justification, but uh, just to save time, there we can see that has now justified those violations. So let's take a, a look at generating some reports. So let's go to TV reports and we can generate all various different types of reports. I want to start with the MISRA C 2023. So there we can see, well, as we expected, we have a lot of violations, but we can scroll down. We can take a look at maybe the, the actual code here. So there we can see a view of the code and color coded inside here, we can see all the violations. So red if they're mandatory or required, and a yellow one if they're just advisory. Okay, what about uh, the justifications or the exclusions? 
Well, we can see in this particular case, we've got three violations that are excluded. And we can see there is my uh, justification inside here. And of course, I really ought to put a, a proper justification in there. But very useful to be able to see all the places where we have actually excluded the violations. OK, so it's not compliant to MISRA, but is it good quality? Well, let's take a look and see. So what we could do is we could take a look at a system call diagram. And on the system call diagram, we can put this into various different modes. For instance, we could put this into a mode that shows us the cyclomatic complexity. And in this particular case, we're going to be able to sort and rapidly find the most complex function. Well, what's this mean? Well, let's take a look at this one. This here has got a value of three. That basically means there's one, two, three paths through the code. This one's got four, this one's got five, this is six, and this one's seven. So there we have got a graphical representation of the code. And over here, we can see this is a block of continuous statements, followed by a branch to another block of continuous statements. So what I'd now like to be able to do is to execute this code. And as it executes, just like it did earlier on, I'd like to find out, well, which paths have we taken through the code? So let's go and perform what we call the dynamic analysis. So in order to do that, I'm going to tell the tool to generate an instrument program and then go to build it. Then I'm going to execute it. And finally, I'll perform the dynamic coverage analysis. And I could also do the data coupling as well. So let's start the analysis. And this is now going to instrument the source code. So it's going to put probes into the code around all the, the branches. And then it's going to start performing the build. So we should see the, uh, the TI compiler there. We can see that's now compiling. We should then be able to download and execute on the target. So I've set a, a breakpoint up here and we can see that's just loading. So yes, I've set a breakpoint on this particular function. And when I've hit that three times, I think, then it should stop. So I can now go and start pressing the button on my target and that should take it through the various different modes. And if I've pressed enough times, there we can see it's now executed that function three times. And we've now got the results off the target and we're going to process them. And we'll be able to find out, well, how much of that code have we actually exercised? So I just need to wait for this to, to finish analyzing these history files, and then we'll be able to take a look. Lots of ways in which we can view the coverage. Uh, probably the, the simplest way is to go and take a look at the call diagram that we looked at earlier. So there we can see, starting the, the call diagram, and this time I'm gonna put this into a, a mode where we can view the, the coverage. And so there we can see we're measuring the statement coverage. I've got MCDC coverage, also branch coverage. So I'll just show those for the moment. And let's go and sort. And there we can see we've got no coverage at all for these. This is very poor coverage. But uh, let's take a look at this one. And let's view a flow diagram. And there we can see very clearly exactly the path we've taken through the code. So green, we've executed it. Red, we've not executed it. And yellow, well, yes, we've executed it, but we haven't taken every path out of that block of code. Similarly, we can look at all the other functions here and we can see the coverage that we've obtained. OK, so what about maybe trying to improve that coverage? One thing we might want to be able to do is to do some unit testing in order to try and increase the coverage. So let's go and do that. Let's go and invoke TB Run. And TV Run is the tool for forming unit testing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a sequence of test cases that I've previously created. So I'm going to go and open a sequence of test cases. So I have some here for all these various different functions. Let's take one inside here for the Blink LED. OK, so click OK on that. And there we can see we have a number of, of test cases. So with these inputs, I'm expecting to get these outputs. And also what we can see here is that I've only taken a single file. And so some of the functions are missing. And so automatically we've stubbed them. And when we stub a function, we can go through and get it to return different values. We can get it to ensure that it's actually executed a certain number of times. So I've set all that up. Well, let's go and run this on the target. So let's start that. So that has now generated a program. 
It's now built it. Once again, we're downloading to the target, executing on the target, getting the results off the target here. And then we're going to process that. And hopefully we'll find that all the tests have passed. So with these inputs, we got the expected outputs that we're showing here. And then finally, we should be able to see that we've measured some, some coverage and hopefully we'll find that the coverage has actually increased. So this is what we got from the dynamic analysis, 88% statement coverage, 71% branch coverage. And there we can see that's just increased. And there we can see the coverage we obtained from this particular run. Right, let's go back into TV Vision. And this time let's generate a report and let's generate this time uh, an IEC 61508 report. So we've measured MCDC, so we may as well go for the, the 61508 SIL 4. And we're going to generate the various reports. OK, so there we can see all these various reports that we've generated. So first of all, we've got our overview here showing the code review. Well, we know we've got lots of violations there. The quality of the code, we've measured all different types of metrics, giving us an idea of clarity, maintainability and testability. And then finally here, we can see we have the test verification and then we've got the coverage that we've, we've obtained. We can go into a bit more detail here. We go into the thermistor, we can drill down, we can see the coverage we've obtained. We can go into a particular function and once again, we can see very clearly which parts of the code we've executed and which parts we've not executed. What else have we got inside here? Well, we've got an MCDC test case planner. We've got function coverage. Let's take a look at the function coverage. In this particular case, we can see we've got some functions that we've not invoked yet. We can also see the unit test that we ran. So in this particular case, there were seven test cases and they've all, all run. OK, so the final thing I want to be able to do is I'd like to be able to automate everything we've done so far, maybe to integrate it into a tool like Jenkins or, or something like that. So let's go and close this down and let's go into the, um, the Windows Explorer here. And there I've got a batch file. I'm just going to run that and that is going to automate basically everything we've done so far. This is going to take quite a bit of time to run. So I'm going to fast forward until the end. It's just run the first six test case files. It's about to run the, the last one. So there we can see it's connecting to the target. Again, we're downloading to the target. We're running. We're going to get the results back and hopefully we should be able to find that this test case file also passes. OK, so that ran. Let's see what the status is. So hopefully it should come up and say pass. Yes, sounds good. So now it's doing the data coupling and then it's going to generate a, a number of reports. I'll be able to see the status of the of the project. Right, so lots of different types of reports that we can generate. Let's take a look at the function coverage. And in this particular case, we've now got full function coverage. So that's good. What about the code coverage? Well, we've got, it's not too bad, but there's still some places where we haven't got the, the full coverage. So once again, we could go into here, take a closer look and find exactly where we haven't got the coverage. And there we can see, well, we've never had Celsius reading minus 64 greater than initial reading. And that's why we haven't executed these bits of code here. Unit tests. Well, we've run all those. We can see they've all, they've all passed. And we've also got some additional reports like control coupling, data coupling, and also reports showing us uh, security, such as uh, do we have any vulnerabilities? And well, got a few uh, violations here. So that's not too serious. What about taint analysis? Well, the good news is we don't have any taint sources or taint sinks inside the, the, the code here. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with, with LDRA. Thank you.